Hey, and welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for joining us once again, everybody. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And we're still in D.C. And we're a special guest. <laughs> <laughs> we're here at the, the Church Key, which is... Um, certainly made a name for itself here in DC as far as uh, craft beer destinations are are concerned so thank you so much for for having us out here you're welcome man totally yeah um, yeah church key is like one of those places like everyone's like you need to go here everyone recommends and it's amazing you have it's great. that name and that's awesome yeah, yeah we've gotten a lot so uh, yeah so I'm Greg from church key um, thanks for coming by guys mm -hmm. this is awesome uh, we are definitely in the middle of the melee that is <laughs> craft brewers conference um, which is Exciting and fun, and uh, yeah, it's great having you. And you said you have like 50 draft lines here? And yeah, so uh, um, we have we have a, a kind of a crazy program. So we have 50 drafts, um, five cast scales, 500 bottles, most of which are all in, in, in continual rotation. Um, we built this place out in October, well, we opened October of 2009, so we're just over three and a half years old, um, and uh, it's, been, it's been great. Um, what we do here that's a little different is our, our service for, of the beer and, and with the beer. So um, each of the 50 draft lines is temperature controlled. All of the bottle coolers are temperature controlled. So even like this is actually the first time that anybody's tasted this beer. Um, it's called Fiscal Cliff. It's a collaboration beer. Um, in addition to Church Key and Birch and Barley, we have a number of restaurants and we're opening our own uh, brewery restaurant and bar called Blue Jacket, which should open actually in this summer. Um, so we've been doing lots of collaborations. This is one. We went out to Chicago and we collaborated with Revolution, Half Acre, and Three Floyds came in from Munster, and uh, we brewed this Fiscal Cliff IPA for CBC specifically, 75 IBUs, 6.3% alcohol, really, really hoppy, low yield beer. Uh, but in any event, when you taste this here, it comes out at 48 degrees. Uh, we have about 30 lines at 48 degrees, uh, which is optimal for kind of for these middle of the road beers. 42 degree lines, 10 of those for crisp, refreshing beers. And then we serve 10 lines at 54 degrees. Um, those are the strongest, most intense beers, Imperial wow. Stouts and Belgian Strong Dark Hill. So all of the drafts are like that, and then the bottles are the same temps based on, on coolers um, as well. Pretty impressive. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is our, I mean, we're from Chicago. So, so there uh, you go. We're <laughs> Rev and all these Chicago breweries. That, they're all buddies yeah. of ours. So, and, <laughs> kind of weird that we have to come out to DC to try something. Well, I think they're going to have plenty of it out there as well. Um, <laughs> it was kind of a special thing we put together for this uh, for this event, along with a bunch of beers from each of the breweries as well. So. Yeah, so that's the big event tonight. You're going to showcase all three of those uh, yeah. collaborations that you made. Yeah, well, so, it's, well, so, yeah so we have the collaboration Fiscal Cliff that you're drinking, um, and then beers from Blue Jacket, because we've done like 16 mm -hmm. different collaborations at this point. Um, beers from Half Acre Revolution and Three Floyds. That's kind of like half of the of the beer tonight so we're doing kind of two events per night so that's one half and then the other half um are 20 of my favorite beers from north carolina actually wow. um, and some really special crazy stuff there old hickory is one of the, the best breweries around um anywhere it happens to be from north carolina and they they sent us a cask of event horizon which is yep. uh outstanding insane to get um you know we have beers from foothills and full steam uh catawba valley lots of different ones so it should be fun so what's a how, how's the, the scene here in D.C. been over the past few years when you guys first opened and what's going on now nowadays? So um, the scene in D.C. actually goes back to like the late 50s because um, not a lot of people realize this, but the first beer bar in the United States was a place called the Brick Skeller, which opened in 1957 as a, as a, a, a French restaurant, actually, in the basement of the building. Um, and even then when they opened, they had something like 30 different beers, mostly cans. Um, and then they just kept growing, growing, growing. And, you know, by the time you get into like the mid 90s, they had somewhat like 2000 different bottles. So wow. DC has always had a pretty vibrant, amazing beer scene based on that alone, the Brick Skeller. Um, not as much local beer was being brewed around here, um, but we had the best international um, possibilities at all times. And that also was bolstered by the fact that like embassies and so many uh, international denizens in the city and things like that. Sure. So um, that was kind of the scene for, for many, many years. Um, and then more recently, uh, we actually have uh, a couple of restaurants called Roostico out in Northern Virginia. And um, that got started in 2006. So we kind of started doing craft beer, draft heavy. Then uh, Pizzeria Paradiso has a couple locations in DC. 
Brasserie Beck. So it all really kind of started snowballing the last, like, you know, I'd say six, seven, eight years with beer bars. Um, and then more recently, breweries have come on the scene. Right. So it's kind of the opposite of the way it normally goes. <laughs> I mean, it's like breweries and then some beer bars come around. Um, but uh, it's filling out nicely. Uh, Northern Virginia is uh, happening. Um, Southern Maryland's doing great. And then obviously the district as well. We have uh, DC Brow, the, the first production brewery in DC since mm -hmm. 1956, opened a couple of years ago. They make outstanding um, beers. And then uh, Three Stars Brewing Company just opened up. Like I said, Blue Jacket's kind of be coming up as well. So uh, it's, a, it's a cool scene that just keeps getting um, better and better. And since it's such a transient town, I mean, lots more people are staying here, but so many people come to town. Um, there's like, there's always a new cotter of beer geek kind of coming in. Sure. Um, uh, and it's, and it's, it's become, we've become here a, a cool, like tourist destination as well. Right. So Absolutely. It's, been, it's been great. Yeah. Whenever people want to come to, come to the town, they want to drink local beers, not just beers that they can get all yeah. over. So yeah. it's, it's great for the community. We're starting to be able to balance that. Cause honestly, <laughs> when we opened like, you know, three and a half years ago, who come in and see, we have 555 different beers and they'd be like, well, we just want something local. And I was like, um, well, I have like some of the best beers from all over the world, <laughs> and in DC we have lax um, uh, distribution laws, and we right. can direct import. So it's mm -hmm. like I can get stuff that you really can't get in one place anywhere else. But people be like, "Well, where's the local stuff?" So now we have some local stuff. But I will say the other thing is, you know, you guys are from Chicago, so you've been spoiled. But <laughs> like, you know, I also I'm not a big fan and necessarily just say you know local for local sake. You know, I think a lot of times local beer kind of gets away with being local. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's purchased or, or talked about and stuff. And I think the liquid's got to be great first and foremost. And then if it's great and it's local, even better. But I'd rather drink something great over something that's mer merely local. Um, so, you know, I always keep that in mind whenever I'm visiting new places because I've had some disappointments where I'm like, oh, I have your local beer. And I'm like, oh, certainly. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is the best you got. And now, and also <laughs> the, the, the boundaries are being um, kind of uh, blurred because, I mean, I could make some loose claim to this being a local beer, even though it's brewed at Revolution Brewing Company in Chicago. It's influenced by Blue Jacket from DC. Right. You know, so does that count? I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, there's a lot of craziness happening right now. You guys are insane every night of this week, mm -hmm. uh, but that's probably not anything new. But what are you normally doing here at, at Church Key, uh, as far as beer-wise? What kind of beers are you, do you like to serve? Um, so, um, you know, as far as we, we are blessed to be pretty busy all the time, which is great, but a big part of the program is a balance of rotating and not. So we're not one of those places that just rotates every beer all the time um, because I believe as much in trying something new as I do in going back to an old favorite. So there's certain mm -hmm. brands that we try to consistently always have. Um, this makes it so I also know that I have something for every palate all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but we are typically changing anywhere from five to 10 beers uh, a day on draft and, that, and then you know we go through about 10 to 15 casts a week on our five engines so you know wow. there's lots of rotation lots of cleaning um, all that stuff we print our menus daily um, which, is, which is so that's always kind of happening um, we do features every Monday and Tuesday here so you know like this week yeah, we're doing two different events every single night changing all the lines but you can walk in here every Monday and Tuesday and there'll be some kind of feature going on mm -hmm. um, so oftentimes brewers are here even when they're not it's a specific feature be it on a style of beer or on a certain brewer's beers or a launch of somebody's beers we do dinners downstairs so there's things always kind of happening here like literally all the time it's not like we wait for cbc to do these events mm -hmm. and as far as like organizing and and choosing beers i created way back in 2005 2006 i came up with a flavor categorization program so um if you look at our list it always is organized by fl major flavors so you have like crisp beers hoppy beers multi beers fruit and spice tart and funky smoke and roast um, these are the broad categories. So when it comes to selecting beers and serving beers, you know, obviously there's going to be lots of hoppy beers, mm -hmm. um, but we never want to have too many. We want to make sure that we have refreshing beers for those in the, looking for that. Hoppy beers, we want malt driven beers for, for people who love, you know, uh, barley wines and scot scotch ales and things like that. We want to make sure we have roasty beers for that palate. And then the cool thing about that is, is keeping that as the kind of uh, scaffolding around which we build the list. I also I'm guaranteed to always have something for every dish because we do obviously lots of about beer pairing and things like that. Yeah, it's, it's very respectful to see, you know, not just having a bunch of draft lines, but also having a very, uh, you know, varietal of, yeah. a, of, a, of, a, of a list going on yeah. where you can get pretty much It's anything. not just willy-nilly and just like whatever <laughs> yeah. the guy, you know, this is new, cool, put it on. This is what I could uh, get. Yeah, it's, it's, it has a lot more. And, you know, 
um, there's certain and there's brewers that I that I uh, just I I'm, I tend to buy a lot from you know um, breweries that are just day in and day out making great stuff. You think of like founders at Firestone Walker, um, Bell's, Allagash, Avery Stone. These are some of the brands that the breweries that we always have stuff mm-hmm. flowing from. And the five cast beers that's impressive too because that's always a struggle i know for bars so like it, yeah a lot of bars have years. trouble in that yeah we i mean that's a cool thing so uh, many many i mean it's weird now three and a half years ago when i was telling people what we were doing here you know i had a lot of like you gotta be you're crazy is it gonna work and this and that whatever but it has worked <laughs> the big thing about it is you know i always talk about craft beer bars you know I, I, it's annoying to me sometimes just to you know what some people pass off as a, a, a beer bar because anybody can buy beer and sell it if mm-hmm. you have a license and you have money and you buy it. You can literally <laughs> buy beers, you can buy the equipment to tap them, but just having a bunch of beers does not a craft beer bar make. You have to be on it. It's a daily passion, you know what I mean? Updating lists, rotating beers, going after great stuff, not just pouring scarce beers, but pouring flavorful beers, mm-hmm. making sure that you're cleaning, you're educating the staff on a daily basis. I mean, I spent 45 minutes with my church key staff every day and 45 minutes with my birch and barley stuff so an hour and a half of my day is just going over everything that's new what's happening getting them to know how to sell all the beer um and that that to me is what it takes to be a beer writer. it's just not having the beers is is the easy part getting them is, is simple it's making the the experience of the guest fantastic that's that's a little bit more difficult so that speaks directly to the cast thing i mean a lot of people do start with cast but if you have servers who know how to sell cast they're passionate about it um you're gonna crush it you know and, and we do and you know um i'm also not i mean cask this you don't just get into the beer bar business you shouldn't at least just to make money right so you know with casks they're expensive um they they call it, for 10.8 gallons you're pretty much always paying the same you would for 15.5 gallons on draft mm-hmm. so right there you're not gonna make as much um you know if it doesn't move quick enough or if it if it starts to go off you know we just dump it we right. don't try to sell it at all. It's like, that's fat. Okay. We move on, you know? So it's, it's a labor of, of love and it's a passion of ours and we love it. And I think when you have that approach, it's easy for the staff to get behind it in the same way. Well, church key doing it the right way. <laughs> so, uh, it goes without saying, but obviously if you, if you're in Washington and you're looking for good beer, this is the place yeah, to be. Yeah. So awesome. Greg, thanks, guys. thanks, man. Thank yeah. you very Appreciate much. It. Thanks for coming by. Cheers. Yeah, thanks whoops. for watching. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Let's spill all our stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>